friend Katrina back in the day in Michigan, we used to, we did this a few times where we would go up to drive throughs and I had like this little yellow Sony um, tape recorder and we would, you know, prank the drive through people. And I, God bless it, I wish I could find that tape because, you know, obviously we were so baked. And we were laughing. You, drive, you go through the drive through and you order like 50 bucks worth of food and then you go and you pay. And then <laughs> no, you take just... off before they give you the food, like Dana <laughs> Garvey and Steve Carell. <laughs> no, no more like we went to like White Castle and I'd be like, I want two onion shits. And they'd go, Excuse me. Just stupid crap like that. Dumb stuff. But White Castle was always the staple. That's the one we always like to go to prank. 24 hours, you know, they by figure, 2 a.m. They figure everybody is stoned that goes to White Castle. Yeah, or you're yeah. trashed. I still can't figure out how Beastie Boys got kicked out of there because, like, nobody gets kicked out of White Castle. They really don't. I don't I nope. see I saw a lot of shenanigans at White Castle. I hope all of this is in the podcast. What are you taking for your allergies? Uh, Well, first of all, let's say hello and welcome to Radio Labyrinth. We'll put all this bullshit in there because it's important and people can relate because it's a horrible season right now and everything is just coming out. Season eight, episode eight. And welcome to the show. Uh, before we get to talking about our nasal problems and our sinuses and things like that, I want to say you could become a Radio Labyrinth Patreon member and think of the joy that would bring you on a daily basis. You could have access to our Patreon only recap shows. This time we are doing The Last of Us, episode six is uh, is going to be available at the same time that this show is available and we are also joined by stephanie's husband mr picklebottom <laughs> yes give it to him and give to it find, to him well to find out there's a mr and mrs picklebottom and to find out all about that which is this is a tease you'll have to become a patreon member and you can do that at the five dollar or on up level and uh, to find out more about that or to sign up go to patreon.com forward slash tim andrews okay and if you are a radio labyrinth uh producer at the 25 dollar level why you get yourself a t-shirt and you can get uh some stickers you can get a, a tim andrews doodle like if you're looking at the youtube page can you see this like because i'm not looking at the camera Stephen king yeah this is a printout of a drawing i did of stephen king standing in front of the dark tower dressed as roland it is the young stephen king not the uh the the old Stephen cocaine Stephen King. Yeah, this is the old pal Asher. Uh, anyway, but that's just an example. <laughs> and uh, Terry Fuller, who is one of our producers, which is twenty five dollar a month level, just got a couple of pictures. Uh, I printed her out some stuff from the Von Hessler Doctrine, like a drawing of Greg Russ and a drawing of Eric Von Hessler as the She Hulk. It's a Sherrick on it. <laughs> and, uh, she also got her T shirt in the mail. So thank you to to Terry. Uh, also to our other producers, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Tim Slayton. By the way, Roby Neely, uh, one of our uh, Patreon producers, has a podcast uh, on YouTube right now that you can find. Uh, it is called Chatting with Daddy. And there's one episode, and he already got a strike. <laughs> and I don't know why, because algorithms are stupid. Uh, but you can also hear him sing a couple of songs and stuff, He's his channel. But I would check it out if I were you, because he's a nice guy. And he used to be on uh, Mike TV. With uh, the Mike TV people, which would be uh, Lisa, Rockdale Tiger. Anyhow, thank you, Roby, and check out his channel. Uh, who else do we have here? Tim Slayton, Mike D, Matt Carter. Thank you guys very, very much. And we'd love to have you uh, as a Patreon member. Producers, do get that doodle from Tim, a printout that I will sign and mail to you, stickers, and, of course, the weekly shout out uh the hey rate and review us uh go to spotify if you're a listener only and you listen uh you might want to use spotify and if you use spotify please rate and review us on there if you're uh listening to us on itunes or any other app like that rate and review us if you're watching the youtube channel which is kick ass and dustin does such a good job on make sure you subscribe like every video and share it with your friends um you don't have to turn the uh, notification on nobody likes notifications I don't, except for when to take my pills. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we have radiolabyrinth.com. You can find most of that information there as well. So the reason I sound so bizarre is because we all live in Georgia, and uh, it was 80 degrees today, and today is February 21st or 22nd, I don't know, that we record this on, but it's too friggin' hot, and all the pollen started coming out a week ago, a week and a half ago. So I am just filled with pollen and snot and uh, taking Zyrtec uh, and once a day, 
and then uh, I take uh, I use the uh, what's the spray shit you put Flonase. Flonase, yeah, I use the Walgreens brand Flonase. Really like Walgreens. It's a cool <laughs> store. I did sleep the other night with uh, with a humidifier next to my head, and I woke up in the morning and all snot had drained out. Isn't that nice? Well, let's just say, do you have you ever tried Zizel? No, what's Zizel? It's an allergy medication. It works. It works even better, I think, than Allegra or Zyrtec. Zizel is pretty kick ass, yeah. And also, you guys keep it kind of warm in the house. I uh-huh. feel like that's part of why you can't sleep. You need to get it nice and crisp in there, nice and cold, so you could breathe. Will that help? Having cold? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who can breathe in freaking just stodgy air? You can't breathe. You need cold air in your You got to keep those kitties warm. <laughs> Look, kitties are in the basement with their mother, and she <laughs> keeps them warm. <laughs> warm air holds moisture. Cold air does not hold moisture as well. So you, when you have, you're have you sleeping with cold air going in and out of your nostrils, it kind of dries you out naturally. It's kind of, you know, like your basement. It dries you out Yeah, uh, makes... p- pumping lower humidity air in. I went to the doctor yesterday and got a, uh, a cortisone shot in my ass. That usually helps. Get a B12, too? B12, is that supposed to help? Jim just sneezed and a bunch of green powder shot out of his face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sneeze. I coughed because I had a post-nasal drip. Neither that or the guy I ran into on the way home. <laughs> so pollen sucks. It's not the pollen. If you see Georgia in a couple of weeks, we'll start seeing the yellow shit everywhere. That stuff doesn't bother me except for you can taste it. Uh, that's the pine pollen. And the pine pollen doesn't bother me. It's the uh, oak trees and uh, the the other trees that aren't oak trees that I can't remember the name of. So you give the old Zizel a try. I think you might be pleased. Zizel. I'll give it a, I'll give it a try. I don't trust things that start with X. <laughs> <laughs> If you're paying attention to the uh, the outrage machine, everybody's pissed off these days because, uh, how do you say his name? Is it Roald? Roald Dahl. And yeah. I'm not talking about like a joint or a doll that you roll up. I'm talking about Roald Dahl who wrote a whole shitload of books that we all loved growing up that our parents probably loved when they were growing up. And then the whole generation of kids now uh, will be able to enjoy because they're nice and friendly to kids. Okay. And, James uh, and the Giant Peach. and Well, James and the uh, Plus Sized Peach. Yeah. Yeah. The enormous peach. <laughs> yes. And uh, most familiar or, or popular, I guess, would be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, the outrage machine has kicked in big time on that. Augustus Gloop, no longer uh, fat, no longer fat shamed. Uh, in fact, he's uh, trying to get into a pool filled with uh, gluten free vegetable soup. The thing is, if you want these things and you want your children, and your grandchildren to read the original books, then you got to go buy them, and you have to have the books. You can't have them on your Kindle. Uh, you can't have them on your phone or whatever the hell you use. You have to have the physical books, and you have to get them now because once they're gone, they're gone. You know what I mean? Like the same thing with Dr. Seuss, who is a noted racist. You have to have all of that. Allegedly. No, nah, he's a noted racist. <laughs> you have to have on, read between the lines. Netflix owns the rights to all that stuff so netflix is going to do whatever they want right that's usual yeah i don't understand what's happening like it's some fa- it's some part the the family trust or whatever that that owns all the rights to the books they've partnered with some kind of pc branding come come hammer or whatever it's called come hammer no that, that was on south park <laughs> something like that where where the branding people tell them that they should Make, make the Oompa Loompas not be from Africa and yeah, yeah, not not he, all he, fat. He apologized for that himself. He realized that he was being that he was kind of being race, not racist. I don't want to say racist because I don't think that's what he was. I think he was just you know appropriating a culture and making up like pygmies or whatever. Right. And I'm sure there's a politically correct name for pygmies. I just don't know what the hell it is. So leave me alone. But. Uh, but the theatrical version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which would be me because I'm not a well-read person. Everything I know is from the movies. Right. Those were not pygmies or, I mean, they were just like orange little right. people with green hair. I would never have even known this, that they were supposed to be pygmies from Africa. I think the ones in the Tim Burton movie are closer to the way they were described in the book, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that little Indian gentleman played all the Oompa Loompas in the Tim Burton movie. Right. Yeah. So also not a pygmy. No. And they yeah. use the real, the real songs, or the, at least the real lyrics from the book in the Tim Burton version where they'd made up uh, the Oompa Loompas from the original one was added in as an after yeah. afterthought. Yeah. Oh. Do you think whenever they made both movies, like even back in the day with the Gene Wilder one, they thought, eh, this pygmy thing's probably problematic. Like even probably. back then they were like, let's yeah. change it. Yeah. That's probably so it's always been were a thing where people orange, are like, Meh. orange creatures from some other weird dimension or whatever. <laughs> right. Hang on a minute. We have a cookie break coming. We have a cookie break coming. Cookie delivery. Ah, hello. <laughs> hey, <hi. laughs> hello. What do you got a little... Girl Scout cookies there? No, Mommy and Gilbert made cookies together, and I got a hot, fresh chocolate chip cookie right here. Yo, Miss Steph. You remember me? I see you. She got you addicted to monster trucks. He you can't know? hear me. You like cars? I he loves cars. <laughs> Give me that cookie. If you're listening at home, you can't you can't see it, but Gilbert and Mommy made um, oatmeal chocolate chip cookies in there to die for. <laughs> See? <laughs> positive review. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Disgusting. I could never have children. That's a good reason. There's the reason why I didn't have them. Because they dis- they're they disgusting. I could never do that. Even if, it, even if I knew that it came from my own body, it was covered in my own juices when it came out, no way could I take food from a baby's hand. Uh, yeah, you would. You would. You, you, you know, you can, you can love a dog the way that you do. You would yeah. love a child like nobody's business, I can tell you. Maybe, but no, I would never let them feed me. I mean, even when, like, Gilbert had a booger and he's obviously adorable <laughs> and I was like, ew. You didn't pick the burger out? You let the booger sit in his nose all night? No, I got a tissue and I got it out, but I've seen, like. Oh, you, know, you know, just pick your finger and yank the booger. Ew. No, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> would never be that comfortable. Ever. <laughs> he can't hear you, but he's laughing. <laughs> Oh, I don't want any more. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> he, he likes it when I get all riled up. I'll start whooping around the whooping around the living room like a big fool. It, it really gets him going. Then he starts hitting me. It's not exclusive to you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you, Mommy. <laughs> That's the most awesome thing ever. You know, five years ago, I heard a baby at the restaurant. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Now I'm like, oh, let's bring all the kids. Nah. <laughs> Does that to you. <laughs> How many kids do you have, Dustin? I always forget. Uh, I've got four. Because I'm a jerk. Four. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. you. You'll have someone to take care of you. <laughs> oh, I hope. Think. And you'll be an investor <laughs> before uh, you're 70 years old. What uh, were we talking about? Uh, you were talking about the outrage of the, of the chocolates. Oh, yeah. The outrage of the chocolates. Chocolate Outrage is a good name for the show. <laughs> other than the other one, what was it? Nancy Picklebottom? <laughs> yeah, this doesn't throw that in the trash. Or a blog. But what are you watching? Watching there. What are you watching? Okay, so what are we watching? <laughs> what are we watching? We watch. Speaking of outrage, more fake outrage. Uh, I don't believe that it's going to happen, but there were stories floating around that uh, Prince Harry and. Uh, princess uh, suitcase we're going to sue the the makers of south park because of that hilarious episode making fun of them last week that episode was so funny that's what jeff brought up the the cum hammer was the name of the, the i don't know why they called it that but it, <laughs> they're a branding company that's like the worst possible <laughs> they branding they can come up with <laughs> i haven't watched it yet all right i don't want to spoil it that and there's no new one tonight no why not i don't they, know they do that from time to time Basically, the gist of the show is the way they always handle the the British monarchy is they put it in Canada. And so uh, Prince Harry and, and uh, Meghan Markle are, you know, the prince and princess of uh, of Canada. And they just want their privacy. So they, they walk around with sign and they interrupt it. Give us our privacy. Give us our privacy. <laughs> yeah. And they move to South Park. And, uh, and uh, Kyle is obsessed with them. But it's a pretty funny episode. That sucks it's not on tonight. Yeah. Look, if J-Lo couldn't sue him because of tacos and burritos, they don't have a chance. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. And that was way more brutal <laughs> than, than this is. And so. <laughs> uh, did you guys watch Picard? No. No. You no. Know what? I did. 
Yeah, I watched it. Um, in one episode, I think they made up for those first two shitty seasons. Just one episode, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, and usual the usual suspects. I always watch takedown videos. Uh, the the guys over at Red Letter Media, they were cautiously optimistic about it. Uh, they watched the first episode and reviewed it, and they did a good job on that. But do you guys follow Critical Drinker on YouTube? Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. Yeah, he's a little aggressive for me, but I know who he is. He's very aggressive. He's Scottish. Yeah. Who are we? Uh, I don't even know if he's really Scottish, but it doesn't matter. He he got the whole season, and he said the whole season is fantastic. It's like the the movie that should have been made uh, to wrap up... Um, Next generation. Next generation. The only thing that bums me out is there's no lore. I mean, not lore, no data. But I know data's dead, but it's... Con- data's in pieces. Yeah, but doesn't his consciousness exist? Uh, I, I imagine if they did draw or rebooted him or whatever. No, I keep him in a drawer. You wanted to age. So is one thing... I've never watched the uh, the Picard series, but is uh, Q in the series? He was in the last season. Yeah. Okay. Was he a Borg? No, no. I was there. Okay, I, I I'd seen something on YouTube, and it was it had Q as a Borg, and I was like, no, I almost made me want to watch, but I didn't. No, he, <laughs> uh, the Borg were in it, and uh, that actress who just recently passed away, who played mm-hmm. the Borg Queen, she did. She was really good as the Borg Queen, but there's so many parts of that show that is like, uh, really, what Q wanted to do was send, uh, the uh, Picard team to Earth to solve our immigration. Yeah. Stu <laughs> from Impractical Jokers was on it too. Really? Yeah. Dwight Schultz going to be on this season. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to be. Yeah, he won't trans you know transport anywhere. Um. Uh, so yeah, kudos to that. We do have guests coming up, I believe, soon. So before we get to that, I want to say uh, that uh, the deep fakes, the deep fakes are are being used for good and for evil. But I found a TikTok channel where they they have all the last three presidents or on Joe Rogan and it's a complete deep fake that must have taken forever to make uh, audio deep fake and uh, my god it's so funny they're arguing with each other they're talking shit it's it's Trump Obama and Biden and they're on Rogan and if you haven't watched this it you have to find it somehow it's on YouTube it's on TikTok it's very very funny I've just put in Biden Trump and uh, Minecraft or Rogan but it's funny did you guys watch the video I sent you yeah I watched some of it yeah, I watched it. I noticed that the uh, all of the presidents are deep faked using that AI, but Joe is actually clipped from. Yeah, it have to be edit. Clips. Yeah, edit clips. Wow, but it's funny. It's real funny. <laughs> and here I am thinking I'm smart, having them read MOD lyrics. <laughs> bubble butt. I have uh, Trump doing bubble butt in the spandex in Normandy. If you don't know what those songs are, you can Google them. Uh, let's see. Other than Picard and The Last of Us uh, in South Park. I watched Poker Face, which you guys are saying you didn't like. Yeah, this was the first Matt episode. In I opinion. 100% agree, Jeff. Really? 100%, yeah. Was it the NASCAR? Because I found it to be okay, except for the ending I hated. It was just blah. Yeah, there was no murder. Yeah. That's true. There wasn't the murder. But where does a dirt track get media coverage in the helicopter flying over? Yeah. I mean, the whole show is always, it's, you know, unrealistic and fantastical, but it just didn't have the, didn't have the fun. It wasn't, it wasn't fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I want to like, I don't want to shit on it though. You know what I mean? No. I mean, no. It's still, it's still quality acting and performance and stuff. Just this, this story I didn't think was very good. And that's as bad as they get, then great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I lo- I love Tim Blake Nelson a lot. Yeah, I do too. They didn't do enough with him though. Yeah. That's true. They didn't. They just well, kind of were like, "Oh, he's in this at the beginning," and then then they didn't use him at all for the rest of the episode. They do that with a lot of their cameos. Look, like, uh, what's his name from the very first episode? Um, the pianist dude. He was yeah. like that. Was a Ake great Brody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was in. He was in it like to the very end. You know. Yeah, but the, they use him for the show for the episode, just kind of like they used to do in the seventies and eighties. Remember, they'd always have like a guest. Yeah. Celebrity on for a character, but that was it. Just one episode, and then they were on to something else. Well, yeah. in the Columbo with, with uh, William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy on. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Dick Van Dyke was a killer. He was a photographer, and he murdered his wife. <laughs> the the format. You know, sometimes she gets into the boy. She'll have so bad. 
They need to have, you know, they need to have Kate Mulligrew on it. Oh, she, yeah, she's great. She was Mrs. Colombo. I know. So, it, you know, and she's worked with her before. Yeah. So, I, and plus, yeah, she's great. But she certainly won't be on any Star Trek episodes. Sean Hannity back again to talk about Atlanta, P- Atlanta Pizza and Euro. I'm going to say thank you to Atlanta Pizza and Euro, the longtime sponsor. Anyway, of uh, of uh, Radio Labyrinth podcast, which is something I've never listened to, but you know what? Mike Hall gave me a free pizza, so I'll do the plug. Please join Atlanta Pizza and Euro for their weekly Tuesday night team trivia from seven to eight thirty p.m. Now, ha- no, do you think Joe Biden would go there? I don't think so. I think Donald Trump would go there and eat all that pizza, but I don't think Joe Biden would. Joe Biden, he doesn't even know where he is. Oh, wait a minute! I'm not doing my show. I'm doing a commercial. Now heading into spring with all sixteen draft beer types available and over forty beers to choose from. In bottles and cans, with strong focus on local Georgia and Stroh southeastern craft breweries. Anyway, serving the best freshly made Greek and Italian. Look, could you do any worse than Greek and Italian food? I don't think so. <laughs> Specialties around in an authentic retro drive pizza place with a come as you are family friendly atmosphere. That doesn't mean you can show up not wearing pants, but you know, you don't have to take a shower. <laughs> Dine in and take out available. Limited delivery is also available versus Slice, DoorDash, Grubhub. And Uber Eats. And Hannity Home Delivery. No, I just made that up. Hey, if you're a business or corporate client who's looking to break up, uh, to, 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 to look at, to hire a food truck for your next event or catered luncheon, please contact Mike Hall at Atlanta Pizza and Euro by calling 770-483-6228. Open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday from 11 to 9, Saturday 12 to 9, and closed on Sunday, which is the Lord's Day. So thank goodness. <laughs> And who do we have this week on Radio Labyrinth as a special guest? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. We have Shona Ray and Riley from I Am Shona Ray. Hello. Hey. But you guys have a cool background, a lot of cool Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Um, as you know, our father's a huge nerd. And so am I. <laughs> Shauna, Shauna, you're not a nerd, I think. No, I, I didn't grow up being into the whole Star Wars space vibe. Like, I only know it because he called it education growing up. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I know um, uh, Sylvester couldn't make it tonight. and uh, But we have we have the star. All right, now I feel bad. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm the star or you're the star. I think we're all equally stars. I think my name is just... More well known because it's the title. Yes, you're on the market. Yeah. Well, that was, that was very sweet of you to say. <laughs> we, we should thank them for letting letting Mark come on our show and do do oh. his Who Buddies puppets. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> you have to hire him out for us. It's great. Yeah. You take away all the puppet antics that we need. <laughs> Does Stallone have a seat at the table like when you guys are eating dinner? No, <laughs> is on the table if we're not eating dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and he does bring it out if you bring people around. He yeah. just goes, you want to see uh, my puppet? Or like, <laughs> anything but all our social medias, he'll bring out the puppet. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the same size as me, basically. From <laughs> so up. So the head is bigger than the, both of ours. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. A larger scale puppet that I'm not used to seeing in the house. Yeah. It's really so human like. They come right down in the dark in the middle of the night. Not a good, not a good choice. <laughs> uh, and then he'll put hats on it and stuff. Well, then the dogs bark at it. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of dogs do you guys have? We have five dogs, and one is a pure golden, and then the rest are golden and border collie mixes. Oh my gosh. I have a border collie mix. Yeah, they're incredibly intelligent. Yes, and horribly annoying, too, sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) One of them tried to eat a knife the other day, though. Yeah. So uh, (laughs) we we were all out of the house, and I had come home first, and I think Mark was still outside dealing with something. And Sahara broke out of her crate, and I was going through the house to see if she did anything. Didn't do anything except to my bedroom. She got my trash. And she pulled down everything off my dressers, including a knife. And there was two marks on the rack. <laughs> <laughs> Why stupid? 
<laughs> but she's special. She's she's tried to eat glass. She tried to eat anything. <laughs> well, their, their first test, they smell it and they're like, "Can I eat it?" And then it's like, "No." And then they they still try. Yeah. <laughs> Angry dogs. Yeah. Or, or her brother can open every door. Yeah. He's also ate drywall. Yeah. <laughs> no, drywall is good. Glass door he can open. Any handle doors, he can open the microwave, the oven, the fridge. He can open any of the locked crates. And I have seen him use a key for a pet. <laughs> I don't know if you can you see my Sam? Does yours look like this? You see my Sammy? Oh, yeah, it's kind of the same body shape, but he's all black except for like his stomach and neck area. And then Sahara also looks really border collie too, but she's golden. So instead of having the black traditional border collie fur, and she has the golden of the golden retriever and white fur. Oh, how cute! Oh my god, they're gorgeous. The smart bear who can use a key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, while we got you guys here, we we want you to plug your upcoming Shikana Ray. Oh yeah. Dive. Well, um, on April twenty third, we're gonna be in Belmore at the Burkers Comedy Club doing a. Meet and greet slash answering questions slash anything kind of you don't see on the show. Because it is it is TV that, of course, goes through an editing process like anything else on television. So I think it's going to be a unique experience for our fan base to see us kind of raw and in the moment. And, and actually, we're going to be doing a puppet show for yeah, some reason. They're going to be <laughs> show people how genuine and real we are on the TV show also because we're, yeah. we're not any different. We're, we're the same comedic, sassy. That is a very common thing that we get when we meet people is people go, oh, you're just like you were on the show. We're like, yeah, we're weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why wouldn't we portray ourselves all 100% of ourselves? Like, So I think it's going to be a fun opportunity. And we also are doing a meet and greet after for anyone who wants photos and stuff like that. And we're selling merch. So it's going to be really yeah, fun. Like my, uh, my comic book and yeah. stuff like that. Like she did a comic for season two and that'll be sold there. And she'll sign it and everything. When you go out, when you go out and about, do you get recognized now, and and people want to talk to you and you know bother you because you're famous? Um, so we do get recognized quite a bit. Me more often. Riley gets recognized a lot because it does my hair. Okay. They go purple. Where's Shauna now? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Yeah, but um, it, it it's not annoying. It's it's a lot because it's a show on Long Island, and they're like, oh, you bring her like a really good name to like Long Island, and they love that. But it, in the city, it's a little weirder because, like, they're stopping you in the middle of the hustle and bustle, and you're like, in the yeah. oh, can we get a photo? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm all for being appeasing and being nice to the public, like, because growing up, like, I didn't have those kind of role models, and, like, if I ever became that role model, I wanted to be an open person to show people that no matter what happens in your life, whether you're on TV or not, you're still human. Yeah. So you're still do all those things i take photos with people i sign things for people i i bring a sharpie and a notepad in my purse at all times now yeah because everyone oh i wish i could have you sign something i'm like i got you yeah people are so afraid to ask and i actually encourage them to ask and ask for those photos because it's a once in a life and time kind of opportunity you don't know if you're going to see me again you don't know what's going to happen and, and we love talking to and people. i love seeing the people that the show affects because yeah. everyone has a personal story of why they connect to the show and i think they're all really beautiful that's I'm actually really amazing people and became friends with people yeah. that stopped us and talked to us like that which is just a really cool experience yeah how often do you get somebody where you're like oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh come on <laughs> And get them out. Honestly, for me, I I don't go like the oh go on that much. I think it's more often like when I'm going out with my friends and like I'm just trying to have a good time and they're like recording me but like not coming up to me and talking to me. I'm like, you can just ask. Like or it's not that big of a deal. There's been times where like Shauna is like dancing or like about to go into a bathroom and someone's recording her and I'll go, no. Hey, no. No. And then they get mad at me and they're like, We can film where she's on a TV show. I'm like no, no, no. They think because I put my life on a TV show that 
at any moment I am up to be filmed. And I, I yeah, and that we're rude if we say no. Yeah, it's like certain situations, it's like she wants to do for all those things. So it definitely depends on the environment and how you approach me. But mostly the people that we know that actually like watch our show and care are very nice and very respectful and yeah. ready to like right when we're leaving and they're like yeah hi <laughs> did you guys watch reality tv shows before you guys were on the show our family big reality tv people tara was a big wedding dress fanatic kind of show yeah so. the yes to the dress was her big thing um so but riley and i we watched a little bit of like i am jazz because she's part of the lgbt community and I never got into reality TV besides, like, the challenge. Yeah, you, and, like, you like I have had it Yeah, I like watching people fight to the death. <laughs> <laughs> and my family is more like the pretty princess kind of reality TV vibe. And I was more a scripted, nice yeah. story, happy ending. I will say our dad got into reality TV. He got into, like, all the little people shows and he... He called it studying. He was yeah. like, before we were going to start filming, he's like, we have to study. And so he started binge watching like every reality. T- but I, I totally think he watched all the shows because of the drama. I think Oh, he got it too. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just doesn't want to admit it. Everyone who says, I hate reality TV because I'm above it. Once they start watching it, then they become experts. Well, this character is this. I, 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 like I, that happened to me a couple of years ago when I'm not going to watch Below Deck. It's just some stupid show about a yacht. And then a week later. <laughs> Can you believe what so and so did and so and so? You just get swept up into the drama. Yeah. Do you feel you understand the reality TV shows a little better being on the other side of the camera? I think you can definitely tell what's edited and what's natural. We have moments where we're like, oh, we know what happened there. Like, you can definitely tell because, like, there is a purpose, like, to the interview process. You don't want to break the fourth wall. And within that, you have to repeat yourself. So you can definitely tell when someone in interview has repeated themselves. Yeah. Sometimes. You could just tell it on their face. And I think that just happens when you work in television. I think I've worked on scripted and unscripted. So I, I think I know a little more than she does. Oh, you can definitely tell just by being a part of that process and see how it happens to you. My favorite is now being able to pick up on where you can see like mic packs or the crew and stuff. And you're like, oh, I see the crew in the background. There's the mic guy. Because we see our people in our backgrounds, and we're like, oh, there they are. Now, oh, oh. It's very fun to watch other reality TV shows now and look for the slip-ups. Yeah, it's like little Easter eggs. Yeah. You have some cool Star Wars. I know I keep coming back to this. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we have some Lego sets. We have our two D2 Legos over there, and then it's all space theme. And my dad 3D printed a lot of them and then painted them. Yeah, like more wow. 3D yeah. printed. Uh, and painted. Yeah, and painted. Uh, well, so when we have two Marvins. We have uh, the 42 Marvins, then Marvin from... Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Where's the Kaboom? <laughs> you know, we have... Heart of Gold up there. And, you know, we have the Heart of Gold. This was a tapestry I bought my dad. And then we have... I have Princess Leia's lightsaber that we want to put, like, where her hand is. But that's oh, a awesome. process. Yeah. And then we got a hanging ship. We're yeah, at third. Sean is not. Me and Dad are. I don't have any cool figures behind me. I have a drawing that Mark did. Oh, really? Oh, that's super cool. <gasps> that one? Oh, I love that one. <laughs> My favorite one of his calendar is the Aztec calendar. Yeah. Or the yeah. the Kool-Aid Man one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Which is a, a, a morbid joke. but It is a morbid joke. It's, it's <laughs> funny because you have the Kool-Aid Man. It, it's it's fun to the education behind the joke to get it. Which, yeah, right. that, yeah. Um, he would test those on my sister and my mom because if they go over their heads, my dad's like, nobody's gonna get it then. <laughs> <laughs> like the rest of the world is probably as gullible as Patty and Tara, so they're the testers. Yeah, and if we got, it, they didn't get it. They're like, it's, he's like, it's too smart. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. It's been awesome having you on the show, man. Uh, I've I've hoped that we could could speak to you, and uh, there's uh, sometimes we have to do like a full in depth one hour to two hour interview, like a Joe Rogan type of thing, you know, get to the bottom of it. 
But, oh. Yeah, because I panic talk. Can't <laughs> <laughs> Eileen here so long? She'll sure just go off and spill all the secrets. That's, uh, before you guys go, let let Riley yeah. plug her her Etsy store and oh, and yeah. Shawnee, you can plug your yeah please. your merch or your cameos or anything you want to plug. Yeah, um, my Etsy is Riley's Goods. It's R Y L E S uh, Goods. I'm very shaky. Thank you. <laughs> um, is an LGBT comic, and right now she's working on character strips for the comic. And, and I do personalized drawings. And she does personalized drawings as long as you message her before and give her a long enough time frame to get it done in time. And then, of course, we both have cameos and do personalized message. Is I'm Shauna Ray. She's Riley on it. And I... God, this, sorry to interrupt, but my God, this, uh, this one of Robin Williams is freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was for uh, dad. I think it was father's. I think it was father's dad. Oh, yeah, she, she's a really good artist. I honestly, I think sometimes she's a little more well versed in techniques out there than other people. So I think she can do anything out there. She's done a couple tattoo ideas, okay. and we have our merchandise on represent dot com slash shauna ray, and we have the Belmore and. The in Belmore Brokerage Comedy Club event coming up April twenty third. Go yeah, third. Yeah. Awesome. So many potential <laughs> Yeah, I hope that's a big success and you can maybe yeah. take the, take it on the road and come come do a show in Atlanta. Yeah, that'd be super fun. It would be really fun to to tour like that. Yeah. I and mean, it'd be fun just to see the states again. We haven't toured since Terra did no, I haven't gone really get anywhere. And then Mark and I can go to the puppet museum and geek out over the puppets. Yes, yep. we can geek out together and take it. <laughs> <laughs> out of our way, we're related. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys, and hopefully there's a season three so we can keep it going and, and see you guys in, in your adventures and stuff. It's it's cool. Thank you, Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you for your time. We appreciate yep. it. Thank you. So good to talk to you guys. Good to talk. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Hey, do you have a commercial to residential construction printing need? Well, guess what? I have a phone number for you and an email address. What are you waiting for? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens in Athens, Georgia since 2005 with fast turnaround and affordable prices. Call 706-316-9366 or email them at athens at ldiline.com. LDI has been sponsoring Radio Labyrinth for a long time and we appreciate it very much. Jeff, tell people what Repro Printing is. They print like big stuff, like uh, blueprints and that kind of stuff. So stuff that you need if you're building a building, and, and it's really cool. So check them out. And thank you guys again for supporting us for so long. I um, mean, that was fun talking to uh, <clears throat> talking to Riley and Shauna Ray, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think it's funny that they, like, they, they, he's, he, like, Mark's running around with the puppets and has all the Star Wars stuff, and they're like, oh, this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah kids of gen xers really sometimes they embrace it sometimes they don't go ahead the whole family's so artistic though yeah oh yeah they're, they're all very much artists so. and mark does all the puppets and the print 3d print stuff and yeah those are cartoons that must be a Mc, mcnaney thing yeah i think it is i think it is Cause your, your grandfather was a, an artist too kind of my grandfather drew comics for the newspaper in Elmira, New York, and he would draw news stories, you know, before they could get a camera yeah. guy out there, everything, he would draw like a dead guy or something, you know. And he, he did some painting too, didn't he, or did he just do... No, my, my uncle Mike uh, did, yeah, okay. does paintings, he's done oil paintings and water paintings and things like that, he's a... But he always had like the, the paint brushes and the paint and stuff, was that to touch up photos? They weren't paint brushes, they were colored pencils. Oh, okay. Believe me, if you used them to fuck around with, you... <laughs> <laughs> they were not to use in a coloring book. They're expensive photo retouching. Before Photoshop, people did all the retouching by hand. In fact, he was so embarrassed by my gnarly teeth, he drew, <laughs> drew fake teeth. <laughs> what a bastard. <laughs> he wasn't being a bastard, he was just trying to, you know, here, you look better with... Extra teeth. <laughs> Why don't you just walk around with this picture taped to your face? Yeah, this is what I would look like without pimples and with teeth. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap up this show, but uh, Jeff, let's do Views of Snooze. Views, views, views. Or, 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 or. 
and snooze. Yeah, um, I, I won't uh, do too much about last week, but Hello Tomorrow is really good. You guys should watch it. It's on Apple TV. I watched all three episodes of the, of season one. W. Earl Brown is in it. It's retro, right? Now it's like, w. Hulk Hulk is old in the first. It's like futuristic, but it's like the fifties futuristic. Right, but does he get killed in the first episode? Because if Earl Brown and dies in the first episode, no, he he's still alive. Okay, see if he'll come on and talk about it. Yeah, and he his character is funny. Cool. All right, so uh, Party Down comes back this week on Stars season three. It's been twelve years since season two ended. That's a hell of a hiatus. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I I'll know. watch this. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I I like seasons one and two quite a bit. Yeah, me and my wife watched them both and loved the show and then yeah. was sad to see it go. But yeah, it's cool. The last time it was on, I think I lived with Jeff. Yeah. That was 12 years ago. But I never really watched it. Not that I hated it or anything, so it's probably going to be a snooze, not because I hate it, but just because I didn't watch the original. Well, you should. Uh, I think if you, if you uh, have stars, you can watch all of them. Stars? Yeah, stars. I don't have some. Uh, number, number two is The Reluctant Traveler on Apple TV. This is e- Eugene Levy doing a travel show. Really? He just goes around to different countries and stuff. I think it's going to be good. What's well, Eugene Levy, so... Yeah. yeah. How bad could it be? It's abuse. I'll give it Yeah, I'll give it abuse for sure. And uh, number three, Lavelle Crawford from Breaking Bad has a stand-up special. This is the f- first one. It's since- funny. Now, this is his first one since he lost all the weight, so I want to watch him see if he's still funny. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be funny? I don't know. Oh, the old adage, you know, look, yeah, no fat, no funny? Yeah. Yeah. That's not fair. It's fat shaving. <laughs> it's, it, no, that's, that's comedian shaming. There's a difference. It was just in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. He, he's always been funny, though. I like, I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to that. It's definitely be a views for me. You going to watch it, Steph? Do you like him? Um, I, you know, I liked him on Breaking Bad and, um, there was other crap that he was in, like, even before Breaking Bad. Yeah, I remember his stand-up when he was really big. Yeah. And he was funny. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when, I mean, it was like, okay. Why are you breathing so heavy? Because I'm <laughs> trying to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so... Uh, let's do our staff picks. By the way, we we do want to thank Mark. Uh, you know, we don't have uh, Sly talking this week, and uh, but he's also working on a red box troll puppet. This is the OG red box troll, not the uh, Lionel, whatever Reg- Reginald Nubbinsworth. Yeah, Reginald D. Nubbinsworth, which is this, which I'm sure Gilbert, if I put it in his uh, bed at night and he woke up in the morning and saw this he would shit his pants <laughs> <laughs> won't be doing that he uh you got to see what he's working on it's the original design it's the original guy and he's gonna have sean hannity's voice or some derivative of that and he'll just comment on the shit of the day and it'll be fun so we look forward to that and thank you mark for making that for us uh let's do our staff picks uh of course mine is the easiest one and i'm talking or debating with my head and i want to see what you guys think about this the mandalorian seasons three season three starts on march 1st uh i got first of all have to get disney plus or figure out a way to find a way to watch it uh but i'll I'll figure it out um do you guys want to do that along with the last of us as it wraps up or do you want to just talk about it regular on here i mean i feel like we could do both at the same time honestly i mean they're both pedro shows yeah, yeah, true. We could actually mash up. We, we could, could. kind of cross them over and be like, <laughs> mix up the Mando storylines with the rest of us. Uh, my staff pick is uh, Danny Carvey on Two Bears, One Cave. Who's the whole, are both of them there? No, it's just, it's just Bert. Oh, really? Where's Danny uh, Carvey's really, I don't know, Tom Segura, is he on tour or something now? Because he he's missed just finished that. Yeah, he finished the tour and he's, I think they had these in the can while he was gone. Yeah. So they recorded, yeah, because Bert probably flew in. They recorded two days worth, and then used them for the next month. Right. Yeah. But Dana Carvey's real good on there, and uh, they they try and teach, kind of tries to teach Bert how to do some impressions and stuff. And <laughs> Bert's Bert's just enamored by people that can do impressions. Anybody that can do any kind of impression, he loves it. Imagine doing an impression of him; you'd kill your throat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I loved him on the Blocks podcast. Bert, yeah. when, he, when he did the Blocks podcast, he was great on there. Uh, yeah, mine is a, a movie it, that Peacock dropped last week. It was came out in 2018. I'd never heard of it. Never saw it. Badass sci-fi action movie called Upgrade. And um, no, it's not. Uh, what's his face? What's her face's pimp from Idiocracy? I was just thinking. <laughs> it's not that. No. <laughs> okay. This this guy, um, he gets an implant that makes him, that is actually, it's artificial intelligence, but it's also independent from him. Oh. So it yeah. can take over his body because he was paralyzed. When they put this in, it makes it so he can walk, but it also will, it can take over and do whatever. But there's a lot of killing, a lot mm. of crazy shit. Great ending. Great Blue ending. House movie, right? Yes, I highly. Yeah, it came out on Netflix. You have seen it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I seen it when it came out on Netflix. It was it was awesome. Oh, yeah, that it. He, he, yeah, it activates and he can like stand from laying down. He just stands right up. <laughs> it's like what's going on? And that yeah, actor, he's... I hadn't seen him in much like since um, Prometheus. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, the... he's the one that gets the thing in the hel- yeah drinks mm-hmm. the stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. so good in this. He's really good in yeah, this. And I mean, like, Logan Barth, will great. Logan Mars. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So upgrade. Um, and it's on Peacock. They just put it on there last week. Speaking of Steph's staff pick, you had a good idea the other week. There was a movie you wanted us to watch and talk about. What was that movie? Remind me. It was Once Bitten. Once yeah. Bitten. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. We should do that. Maybe make that a, a a Patreon thing where we watch it and talk about that. Or I don't know. Dustin's only been wanting that for four years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> better late than never. <laughs> My staff pick is uh, a YouTube channel again, uh, but this one is a reaction channel. Now, I know, you know, the reaction channels are big and, and some people like them, some people don't. But this guy named Jay Bond Reacts is the name of the channel. Um, he's a really cool dude from Canada, but what he watches uh, is all of the 80s movies. It, it's just he's he's a fun, you know, entertaining host for uh, revisiting a lot of fun movies. And you can, you know, with one of those videos, you can squeeze in re-watching a movie with someone, you know, in about 20 minutes. So it's like, you know, kind of the highlights of the movie. But um, Jay Bond reacts, and um, yeah, it's on YouTube. Awesome. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, Steph, is there anything going on with Barkville that you'd like? Uh, yeah, this weekend there at uh, PetSmart on Saturday in Alpharetta from 11 to 2. So come on out if you'd like to see any of our dogs. We'd appreciate it. If you'd like to foster or adopt, go to BarkvilleDogRescue.org. Or if you uh, just really feel like you need to do something altruistic without actually doing anything give us money we need money so so badly right now so if you can go to barkvilledogrescue.org and hit that donate button we'll take anything you got five bucks ten bucks you know whatever we we could really use it so but thank you wolf keep it keep it going on yeah and then me and tim um i mean i would be going to this adoption event me and tim are going to this comic con deal yeah, that's right. We are going to Comic Con. We'll try to talk to Jamie Farr because we know everybody has questions for him. Yes, Jamie Farr. It's I want a big to, one. I do want to meet Jamie Farr. I want to uh, meet Jamie Farr. I, I shit. Yeah, you come over to my house. We'll drive down there. Here, Tom Swade says hi. Swade. Oh yeah, duh. Yeah, they're from Toledo. Yeah. <laughs> the Mud Hens. I'll have to bring my mash stuff. Oh wait, I don't have any. I'll have to bring my um my Cobra Kai stuff. I don't have any. There's well, yeah, I know, but you can get a photo with all the people from Cobra Kai if you're rich. Yeah, the group the photo stuff. op. Yeah. I mean, I think it's affordable if you have money, but I don't have money. I do want to get a couple of things signed. Um I, I it's it's different from Dragon Con. Dragon Con is a city thing, it's an Atlanta thing, it's an experience. This is just a warehouse filled with famous people, and sometimes I like that because you don't have to do a lot of walking. Well, me, you, and Jeff, we all went to the last Comic Con. Yeah. Right? This was pre pod. Mm hmm. This is before we did the podcast. Oh my God, we did. Yeah. We didn't go together. I was That's there. Part of that. Winkler. Yes. I was there doing the cover it for that stupid magazine. That's right. And, and we yeah. Well, for that magazine. Stop it. Oh, shut the fuck up. So and then we just all ran into each other there. But yes, and Henry Winkler was there. Oh, God. That was the, that was the highlight of my life. Nice. He hugged me. 
Wasn't he, he like the- looked into my eyes? Oh, Stephanie, how are you? He did. It was like we oh. knew each other forever. I was like, I'm gonna die. He had on this lavender sweater. It was so oh. so oh. fucking adorable. This this you look so nice, and I love the newspaper that you worked on. It was great. I subscribe still, and I know you don't even make it anymore. So I hope so much that we, if I get like one encounter like that, I'll be so happy. Vivica Fox, she was super sweet. Vivica Fox is awesome. She was sweet, and so was Fred Williams. He was kick-ass. I mean, we got to see him, RIP, Fred Williams. He was still in pretty good shape at that point. And all the uh, cast members of The Human Centipede were there. They were all <laughs> sweet, and all three of them signed the picture for me. <laughs> One after the other? Yes. <laughs> and then they let me <laughs> their mouth. <laughs> it was really cool. Where can people find out more about this uh, expo, Jeff? I can't find the link on here. It's uh, atlcomiccon.com, I think. Oh, there we go. Yeah, atlcomiccon.com. Uh, uh, it's one of those touring things, but there's tons of actors there. Uh, just real quick before we wrap, you got Sean Astin, who I've met before and talked to, and is a nice guy. Billy Boyd and Dominic Monaghan, if you want to bring your Lord of the Rings stuff. Also, Elijah Wood. Listen to this. Uh, Billy Zane, uh, if you're a big fan of... Uh, uh, Demon Knight. Yeah. That's what I want and, to talk about. Yes. Lauren Cohen. Uh, Martin Cove. You know we got all those people. Giancarlo Esposito. Man. He's a big dog. Big dog. Hell yeah. Seth Gilliam. Bring your wire stuff. Chandler Riggs. Uh, Josh Hamilton. I like Josh Hamilton. I'm going to see if I can get him something. Chris Sarandon. Corey Feldman. Paulie Shore. Uh, yeah, I'll be all right without meeting him. Butch Patrick. Jamie Farr. I would love to meet Loretta Swit and Jamie Farr, okay? MASH. Uh, and all the other stuff they did, like MASH. <laughs> Maybe the Cannonball Run. Uh, Butch Patrick, of course, is Eddie Munster, and then he was on Lidsville. Got chased around all the time by Charles Nelson or LA. Uh DB Sweeney, if you're a big fan of getting of aliens carrying you away someplace. Uh Daphne Zuniga, Irony Singleton, uh Cooper Andrews, who's friends with our friend uh, Josh Warren. You know him from The Walking Dead. So tons and tons and tons and tons of people that you know. Uh just uh, go to the website again and check it out. It's Atlanta Comic Convention. Dot com and uh, guys I'm about out of gas so I'm going to bid you all adieu and have a great week weekend and until next week please remember to keep it, it canon, canon.